If you could change your personality, would you do it? Now, I think most people are going to answer yes to this. And if you're saying no, then I bet you your friends probably would uh, want something changed in there anyway. But the reason we say yes to that is we instinctually know how big of a difference our personality will make on our life in terms of success, especially when it comes to women. Someone who is way too nice might want to be a little bit more disagreeable. Someone that's introverted and shy might want to be a little bit more outgoing and talkative. And someone that is riddled with fear and anxiety will want to be more emotionally stable. But is that even possible? Can you change something as intrinsic as your personality? Well, the answer to that is yes, you can. And I'm gonna show you how to transform yourself into the most attractive version of yourself that you can be. 10 years ago, I reached a moment in my life where I decided I wanted to change who I was. I wanted to be happy. I didn't want fear to make decisions for me. I don't wanna live in this shadow of life. So I did it. I went from being introverted and shy and decisive to someone that could confidently go out to the club, approach five strangers staring there, start a conversation, and take the hottest one of them home with me. That experiment that I ran over a few years, the sample size of literally just me, taught me so much about our ability to change our personality. I then took that experiment and I basically ran it on thousands of men after that. And in this video, I wanna show you what I found. By the end of this video, I wanna give you the protocols so that you can change your personality and not over years, but in a matter of 12 weeks. So before we get into the protocols, what exactly is your personality? So essentially personality is just a set of traits with characteristic patterns of behaviors, thoughts, and emotions. So obviously you guys know this, like things like persistence, generosity, honesty, they're all personality traits. And your personality is essentially largely depicted by your genetics, but then it's shaped by the interactions that you have, your temperament, your environment around you. So if you wanna know exactly what your personality is, the best way to measure this is through what's called the big five. This is the best tool, it's the most valid tool. So it looks at personality through the lens of openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, neuroticism, or like emotional stability. And these factors can be broken down into facets and sub facets. I'll pop that on the screen here. But I'm also gonna leave a link down below. So you can click on that, it has a tool there, it's free. You go through, answer a bunch of questions, and it's gonna tell you where you sit on these different personality traits. It might give you an inkling of maybe some things you want to try to fix or improve that we'll talk about in a sec. Uh, but that's a good way to see exactly what your personality looks like. So let's get into how to change your personality. So what exactly do you need to do? Uh, um, well, honestly, you can do absolutely nothing then it's gonna change whether you like it or not. It's naturally gonna change over your life. So you will come a little bit less neurotic, be a little bit more open, more conscientious, and that will then slowly degrade when you're sitting there in your nursing home. There's also big life events that are gonna change your personality. So if you get married, I don't know if you've noticed this, but if any of your friends from college are now married, you'd probably notice they're a little bit more conscientious and responsible now that they're under the thumb. But we also have treatments and therapies to change your personality in a very active, purposeful way in a much shorter period of time. So these are used on you know, personality disorders, but there's also studies on positive psychology. So taking people that want to be more extroverted or more conscientious, and we actually have studies showing that you can change this, and we're gonna go through some of these and how to do it. So what do women actually care about? What type of personalities do they look for in men? So the easiest thing you should look to change is extroversion. So there are the dark triad traits that can be very attractive to women, but these can be also negative in other areas of your life. But something like extroversion is going to have the most robust link with positive emotion. So this gives you increased purpose and satisfaction in life, subjective vitality, self-acceptance, environmental mastery, and positive relations with others around you. And you'll be perceived as more competent and likable. So if you really had one, personality trait you wanted to upgrade in your life, extroversion would be it. And I think one of the biggest issues I see with my students is they identify with being introverted. And the thing is, most of us are. Like, it's very difficult to naturally go out there and be very talkative and outgoing and want to be the center of attention, especially amongst women. But the problem is you don't want to identify with that personality trait as if it's static. You don't want to see it the same way as being short or being bold, where you can't change that. It's just the way it is and you have to work with it. Being introverted isn't like that. You can change this trait. So make sure you're not holding onto it as an excuse. Introversion isn't who you are. It's something that's holding you back. And the more extroverted you can become, 
the more attractive you will be. So let's have a look at some of these studies and what they've done to allow people to become a little bit more extroverted. So the first study I found was from 2015, where researchers had participants generate implementation intentions. So these are basically these very concrete challenges or like if then statements. So it might be things like call a friend that you haven't spoken to in a while, go to a meetup event in your area. And then they'll basically break these challenges down. So a little bit more achievable. So having a conversation with a stranger might be something for someone who's learning to be extroverted, someone that's really difficult to start with. So you can break these down for like four steps. So first one might be literally just brainstorming questions you might be able to ask other people. Two is go to a public space where you can mingle and say hi to someone new. Number three is introduce yourself to someone new. And number four is introduce yourself and then start the conversation by asking a couple of these questions. So over the 16 weeks in this study, they found that people actually increase their scores of extroversion and some other personality traits too, but we're just gonna focus on extroversion for this video. Then in 2018, there were another couple of studies that took this same method, but introduced used coaches and um, therapists basically to help with this process. So they also had people basically act introverted and follow these behaviors and challenges. But they also realized mindsets and beliefs played a big part in this and they helped to shift those in order to increase and improve the change that the participants would have. So the first thing they did is they had people understand what the difference was between the personality they had and the personality they wanted. And they made it very clear. So they asked questions like, if you could change your personality, how would your life look like in five years from now? So it allowed people to really focus on those goals and see what change they wanted to have. They also made this very strength focused. This therapy and treatment wasn't about, okay, there's something wrong with you. You have this introverted disease and we need to fix it. It was all just about very positive, like optimistic goals. Like what can we change and improve to just make your life feel a little bit better, to have you be more confident, to have you be more outgoing and talkative and social. So they really focused on their strengths and also their resources. So they had people basically tell their friends about it, have their friends encourage them, or they created their own little communities or support groups they were all basically having the same or similar goal in terms of personality change so they can help each other out. So lastly, they also focus on insight. So they realized that changing personality traits like this can be very difficult and comes with a lot of failure. So they actually had people reflect on their experience and they ask them to basically look at it very objectively. Like how is this helping your goal? Even if you go out and you're unable to speak to someone new or you do speak to someone new and it doesn't go as well, then how can we improve this? How can we fix it? What are the things that are holding you back? And objectively, how can we correct this? They also realized that the more someone believed they could change, the more they actually would. And it acted as this self-fulfilling prophecy. So in the program, they had education around how these steps actually improve your personality and how it'll be successful over time. Lastly, there was a study done a couple of years ago, which basically took all these steps, but they put it into an app and they had participants interact with a chat box instead of the therapist uh, twice a day. So they had these behavioral tasks, feedback, encouragement and support. And this also found a significant change in extroversion over the 10 weeks. So on this simplest level, all these studies have showed us when you start to have thoughts, feelings and actions, that are representative of a certain personality trait, over time, that will start to be automized, will be habitual, and will start to become a part of your identity. You will start to become more like that personality trait. So I just really wanna cover inauthenticity because I know that the biggest barrier for most guys listening to this is going to be, yeah, this sounds great, but it's not me. I am introverted and this is just gonna be like super draining for me. It's just who I am. And I think about it the same way as perhaps like learning guitar. So if you pick up a guitar, tell everyone you're a guitarist and practice like 18 hours a day, it's gonna be super draining, you're gonna burn out and you're gonna hate yourself. But if you pick it up like an hour a day and practice it, slowly get better over time, eventually you will become a guitarist and it won't feel as draining or as exhausting to practice and learn that. And I think it's the same with being extroverted. If you go out every single day and you just think, I'm an extrovert and you're gonna try, it's yeah, of course, it's gonna be draining. But if you just take small steps, little by little, and slowly increase that over time, it's gonna be way easier. And actually, interestingly, in a lot of the research I read, introverts underestimate the effective benefits and overestimate the effective costs of acting extroverted. And they also found that acting extroverted was actually associated with increased level, levels of subjective authenticity. And I think I can understand why, because I think for a lot of guys, they're probably a little bit more talkative and outgoing 
around their close friends and people they can really trust and they've been around with for a while. And then you put them in a new situation or in front of women or on a date and you might actually feel very repressed. And you can use the excuse that you're introverted, that's fine. But I think over time when I have my students and I have them go out and they start to become more talkative, more open, they have these like all this attention on themselves and people are reacting in really positive ways they tend to feel really energized by this and it feels really good. And they start to feel like this is more of me. This feels real, this feels right. Now getting to this point, you might have to deal with those long nights, the long days, the feelings of rejection that can be emotionally draining, which will get easier over time. And there's ways to deal with that as well. But in the long run, it is so worth it. So again, you're only gonna feel inauthentic if you focus on it and use it as an excuse. All right, so that's great that we saw some studies and we saw what works, but I want to talk a little bit about what I did because I think it's uh, way better than these 10 week studies where they're doing like one challenge a day or some bullshit like that. So yeah, over the years, I completely changed my personality. I became way more extroverted, more conscientious, less neurotic, more open. I went from someone that hated being in a club, going out, being around other people. I didn't get invited to parties. Even the, honestly, like when I did get invited to parties, I was like, I don't wanna go. I just, this seems like so much emotional work. I'd rather just stay at home. Like I would go to university, literally just go to my, like I skip lectures. I went to like my class and I wouldn't make any friends. I just talked to people when I had to. And then I got the f out of there. I went from that to now the person I am today, where I look back at myself, I'm like, I don't recognize that guy. I really enjoy going out. I enjoy having conversations with people. I mean, I mean, like anyone, there's a limit. Sometimes it feels a little bit draining, that's fine. But the personality I have now is way more attractive to women than it ever was 10 years ago. So what did I do? Well, it wasn't this um, 12 weeks of doing one little thing a day. I went out every night for like three years. And I realized I wrote a list of things that I realized I started doing. Number one was I just stopped saying no to things that were like fearful or scary. If there was something new, I was doing it. I then made an effort to be like very grateful for things in my life. I refused to be negative. Everything was essentially like a DHV. I just became optimistic. Like I was eternally making the best out of every single situation. I started making more friends. When I would go out, every single guy, I don't care how creepy or weird these wings were, they were my friends, okay? I made friends with everyone when I get out. I started saying no to people when I realized I was doing it in a very like people-pleasing way. So I tried to be a little bit more assertive. And I'd, um, yeah, I'd make an effort to be more decisive and make choices to lead, especially around women. So I basically looked at every single behavior and mindset and thought that I have. And I just asked myself like, how can I optimize this? Like, how can I make it? Honestly, back then it was just literally about women. How can I make this more attractive? But in retrospect, it actually made me happier in life overall. I always say like game is honestly the best therapy you can give yourself because it'll challenge you on every single aspect of your life. If you have a vulnerability, if you have an insecurity, you're gonna be able to get over it through the act of game, really. But then I took this and I realized, okay, <laughs> Um, I'm gonna start trying to help other guys with this. And this is back in the day when I was just doing this for free, but don't worry, you don't need to do what I do, okay? You don't need to go out every single night for three years or however long it was. I obviously faced a lot of roadblocks, especially with my mindsets. And that's something that I, I wish I had someone to help me with and coach me through, but I'm kind of happy, honestly, that I didn't because it taught me a lot about myself and how I can impart this on others. So. Then when I had students basically come up to me, I would do a very similar thing. I'd basically look at their personality, look at how they're acting, look at their mindsets. And I'd ask myself like, how can we optimize this? What is the one thing here we can change that is gonna have the biggest return on investment that will make them more attractive to women with the least amount of effort. And then we would create a plan and implement that and get them to slowly change these behaviors and mindsets with women. They can practice on them night after night. And I started to see a shift in personality. This is the reason that I actually got into coaching and quit my job was the one guy I was helping at the time, basically went, he was from Europe, went back home and he said like, yo, um, I, I feel like I've completely changed or at least like that's what people around me are saying. So it wasn't, obviously it was really cool that it was like pulling women and having success there. But the real thing that I enjoyed hearing was 
his friends and family were saying, you're way more confident. Like you're speaking more loud, you're walking around, you have this like assertiveness and confidence about you. And I was like, holy shit, that feels really nice. Like I'm starting to see the change that I had and what I was so grateful for in other people. And I was like, okay, this is exactly what I wanna do. So if you wanna start having these same changes, just do the same shit. Just figure out, okay, where are my shortcomings here? Do the personality test. Ask your friends around you and then see, okay, what's something that I can improve? Now, the easiest thing, of course, as we've talked about in this video, is gonna be extroversion. And then ask yourself, how can I start applying this in every single day in my life? Obviously, we have a lot of content on game, which is very similar behaviors, but that's only gonna be probably a few nights a week or a couple of times a week, depending how often you're going out or how many dates you're going on. If you really wanna see real change in your personality, think about how can I implement these behaviors as much as I can every single day. So I'm gonna put a list of challenges of behaviors for extroversion link below as well that you guys can check out and start implementing. The next thing I do is have that insight, start reflectively looking back and asking yourself, are there any mindsets that are holding me back here? Are there any mindsets that I'm having that are really introverted that I can slowly change to a more extroverted point of view? When you start doing that, again, they'll become automized, habitual, become part of your identity and hopefully, you look back on this moment when you decide to change and have the same feeling that I had, which is I don't even recognize that guy anymore. Now, of course, if you want some help, um, I'm here for that. So if you wanna change every aspect of your personality to be more successful in your life and with women, then book in a call with me, it's free. We can go through those first few steps, identify what we really need to change. Then we can come up with a plan and I can help you through my coaching over the next 12 weeks. So if that's something you're interested in, book the call, let's have a chat. Um, otherwise, I'll see you all in the next video. Love you all. Take care. Bye.